Yeah, here we are, Business Supermodels. This is the section, of course, where we break down a business into its fundamental components so that you can start it yourself. This week, as we are discussing political organizations, we are going to discuss what it takes to create a lobbying firm of your own. And as I said earlier, hopefully this at least gives you some insight in how to approach a lobbying firm and the type of business that they do. A lobbying firm is an organization that goes to government officials and says, we have money behind us, we want you to do this, and we'll either give you a campaign contribution, or if you don't do this, maybe we'll contribute to your competitors. There's a lot of other sorts of demands that are placed on different parties, but this is sort of the fundamental transaction that takes place. So when you want to set this up, and honestly, first you have to deal with the moral dilemma, because this is bribery in a very big way. This is extortion in a legalized way. In many countries, it's not legal at all. So you need to understand your local regulations and requirements to understand how this is done. If you understand what's possible and what rules are uh, open to you or what uh, regulations don't affect you or what dynamic will allow you to move forward, you need to take a personal inventory first. To be a lobbyist, you need to be persuasive and skilled at negotiating. So if you have a lobbying firm, you might not be the chief lobbyist. Maybe you could just organize a group of lobbyists, you know, you just the organizing uh, entity. But somebody needs to be skilled at negotiating and persuasive. There needs to be strong networking skills within your organization, good communication verbally or in writing. And if you can't pull off one of those, verbal communication or written communication, I would say that is the straw that breaks the camel's back. You're not ready for this business. But if you can write or you can speak or both, beyond that, it comes down to understanding the legislative process. How are the laws in your niche of lobbying enacted? Who is involved? Who are the relevant politicians? Who are the politicians in your arena that are interested in this topic? Who are the opponents of this topic? How are the committees? How does this information pass through committees in the government? Where does it start? How can you build importance for this cause? Understanding the legislative process is fundamental towards executing uh, legislative lobbying. You need to be ready to put in the hours. I would highly recommend you just start to consider this all that you do. You are constantly on the clock. You are constantly working. You won't charge that way, but there is going to be times when you're just going to sit down and work on this for an hour on your notepad, and you should be charged. But you have to understand you're going to wake up in the morning with this on your mind, and you're going to go to bed with this on your mind at night, and sometimes you're going to get very little sleep. It's just the nature of the work. It's not like you do this and have a leisure life, too. It's full-time. Do you have any connections already, by the way? Do you know people in government already? Do you know any influential lawyers? Do you know anyone? If you don't, just like I said with other topics, try approaching your academic community first. They might know at least who you should talk to. Or call a lawyer first and express your interests and intentions of making this type of business. I'm sure you could at least get some recommendations. So beyond that, you need to educate yourself. What is your formal education? Have you studied political science? Have you studied law? In the beginning, try volunteering for a lobbying firm. You will get critical skills and build some valuable connections. And you're working for free, so it's much less incentive for them to say no. What are some niches that you can serve specifically? Well, this would be based on your interest or what expertise you've gained from experience that you already have. Um, Then your clients are also going to be participating in this niche. And so you've got to ask yourself, how are they looking at it? What do they expect to get out of it? You know, uh, lobbying clients from the real estate industry is going to have a completely different set of expectations than the National Rifle Association. And maybe you're interested in serving uh, gun ownership rights, but you're not interested in serving, for instance, the tobacco lobby. So you're going to make your decisions based on who you are. And then from there, it's going to inform how you educate yourself, for instance, about the legislative process. And then from there, you want to establish your identity. So the first thing is, is determine your area of focus. So it's not just about thinking about it. You make a decision. You want to set up your website, your social media. You want to present yourself as professional. Um, You want to preferably have a physical office, which is unlike some other businesses, but this is a place where people are going to visit from time to time. It's not necessary because, you know, remote workforces are increasingly accepted. 
in this uh, technological environment. However, this is still a people-to-people -people business, and fundamentally, this is business-to-business -business marketing, so relationships really matter. Maybe having an office, caring a little bit more about how you dress, being cordial, willing to make appointments, willing to be on time, be on time, as usual. And when you're getting started in the beginning, you do want to prime whatever network you have. So you want to contact influential people that you know, let them know what you're doing, and let them know what your goals are. Beyond that, you need to start building your network in whatever way you can. Here are some best practices if you're going to be a lobbyist. First thing is you live and die by your identity. So you always want to identify yourself and anybody you meet. Hi, my name is Ryan Perkins. I'm here to meet you for whatever reason. Smile. Be polite and professional. State a clear and concise objective. I'm here because I want you to look at uh, pipeline legislation or business education or education reform legislation or banking reform legislation. I'm an advocate for this. Now you know who I am. I'll be back. Let's get to know each other. Uh, you don't want to use form letters. You want to appear to be uh, communicating genuinely. You know, uh, there is a saying that uh, a good politician never writes letters, but also never throws them away. So it's probably also true for a lobbyist, and especially because you're bribing people and you're threatening people. Maybe writing letters is not the best idea at all. But if you are going to do it, you want to make it seem genuine. Um, and the best way to seem genuine is to be genuine, to actually write your letters. Um, use the web and email effectively, of course. Uh, never lie or mislead. Work with legislative staff. You want to get to know as many staffers around uh, the, uh, the Congress as possible or the Parliament as possible, depending on what country you're in. Um, and then you want to listen to elected officials' comments and questions. You want to understand what each elected official what their agenda is and what their goal is. So that way, if you want something, you know the right politician to approach first, which would be a sympathetic ear, and then from there, the, the, they will help you roll out the process within their uh, legislative body. And then when people help you, remember to thank them. This is politics, and even though you're not a politician, you are. This is a lobby firm, and it's very much about statecraft, and person-to-person, uh, -person. friendship matters, trust matters, loyalty matters, and sending gifts and thank you notes is a very uh, powerful way to back up your commitment to that relationship. Beyond that, there's legal requirements that you're going to need to understand. State laws vary in the United States about how you can lobby officials. The government is constantly changing its law. The Supreme Court is constantly passing down rulings. For instance, I'm in Ukraine right now, and lobbying is illegal altogether. Now, I am aware of people who do it, but I dare say that on paper they are not um, uh, registered as lobbyists. They're probably just lawyers, and lawyers talk to politicians. Uh, the official industry is not... Uh, practiced in Ukraine, but uh, I would say that the practice is probably practiced more than anywhere else. It's a very face-to-face -face type of government. Um, so, you know, make sure you do your legal rules and requirements study, because in this industry, it is not hard to break the law, and it just matters what you say. Certain combination of words coming out of your mouth will put you in prison, so be careful. Now, once you're established and you understand your environment and you've identified who you are and who you want to be in this equation, you've got to move on to, uh, to marketing. Uh, lobbying is really the art of knowing what people want and then structuring an opportunity that also involves leverage. So you give them what they want, they give you what you want, you give them some of your client's money and they give you the goal your client wishes. Understanding what your client wants and then proposing to them how and to whom you can lobby on their behalf. Every lobbyist has contacts, and this is their main value proposition, actually. However, if you have money, there will be a way to approach any politician. So get the client's money and make a budget. That's your objective as a, as a lobbyist. Structure your proposals so there is something for everyone, including you. That's the joy of this industry. It's a lot of free policies in your pocket just because you piggyback them on somebody else's. Your client wants a highway contract. The state senator wants campaign funds. You can promise the, sen the senator the client's money. Oh, by the way, you'd also like to have a liquor license for a friend. 
So beyond that, you have to deliver your service, deliver on their expectations and promises you've made. This is what service delivery looks like. Um, you will eventually come down to the vote or leaning on an official of some sort. So everything you're doing comes down to pretty much those two tasks. And then after you've delivered the service, it pretty much comes down to customer service. Report back to the client often. This is a word-of-mouth industry. They can benefit you in other ways because they're just generally influential people, and at least they can recommend you to new customers. So you want to preserve your relationships. It is true in this industry as it is true for all politics. This is the industry of making friends and convincing people to trust you. And if you can master this industry, the world can truly sit in the palm of your hand. So I wish you really good luck and uh, encourage you to lobby with responsibility. Have a good day.